of, in the Bible it says, God, uh, your hair is your glory. I love my natural hair because of the versatility in my hair, and I love me, so I love my hair. It represents who I am as a woman of color in America. It means a lot to me, and it's like a journey with my hair. Hair means different things for different people, and the workforce in our country has debated for years what is acceptable. The United States military has even revisited its standards for appropriate styles. In 2015, the national spotlight focused on Greenville after a video I posted discussing the topic went viral. WNCT's Tamara Scott has looked into the debate further and joins us with more now. Tamara. Whether it's a relaxed debate or a dramatic blowout, hair is a hot topic in our country. It has a large impact on culture, religion, and education, showing the strands on your head defined who we are. For many reasons, thousands of women of all backgrounds are embracing their hair in styles they feel comfortable in, whether it's natural, processed, or if it's a weave. Renita Stanford says that is her motto at her natural hair salon. I try to take away the limitations from my clients and then that way they can be more versatile to wear whatever they want. I've been learning about hair for over like 20 something years, about 30 years. In those years, she has seen many changes. You know, I'm grateful that I do have professional people that I do service and you know, I have to make sure that they are staying, that their style is not too flamboyant, too edgy or too um, eclectic so won't nobody really judge them, but still where they can be able to express themselves and still feel like they're their own individual person. Stories around the world show that is not always easy. In September of 2016, a federal appeals court ruled that banning an employee from wearing their hair in dreadlocks is not racial discrimination. In a 3-0 decision, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals dismissed a case brought by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission against a company that refused to hire a woman because she wouldn't cut off her locks. It's an issue that hit home for some in the East. Had certain situations happen where if I looked a little different, things probably would not have gone down the way that they did. No one should be um, questionable about your appearance. Your appearance is just your appearance. Stanford disagrees with the ruling. And my hair should not be a distraction from you just because you can't control me. Attorney Jacinta Jones told me the lines of discrimination can be blurry. When it comes to the policies that an employer can put into place, you generally can make any of the policies that they would like to based on an employee's physical appearance. As long as it doesn't interfere with race, gender, or religion, Jones says they can decide to hire you or fire you. The main thing in the legal field is that your hair comes off as professional and presentable. But for many, hair has a deeper meaning, and following those policies just isn't an option. If I have to have a job based on putting chemicals in my hair or to look differently or to be related to other people's descriptions, I won't do it. I just won't have a job. Many other women also feel this way. They say now it's all about embracing how they look and learning how to style it. Because of that, do-it-yourself tutorials are all over social media, and local trade schools are even changing curriculums to keep up with the demand. One of the things that um, we could do is educate the clients on with natural hair, how can you wear it style so it also is appropriate. But the question stands, whose definition of appropriate? Renita says chemical change or color can be just as appropriate as dreadlocks or twists or even straight hair. It shouldn't be like that. It's the same way when you decide to say, I want some blonde in my hair. I want some color. It's the same thing. Just wear it, rock it, change it when you're ready. The thousands of strands of hair on your head ultimately means different things for different people. And as Renita says, it's always best to just stay true to yourself. But as long as we be confident in who we are, we shouldn't allow society to keep right on. When I took on this story, I had no idea how much information I would learn about hair. And I've talked with so many different women about why they care about their hair and their opinions on if you should be able to wear it in the workplace. Now, the conversation spilled over to social media. Letitia Simmons mentioned at her place of employment, people celebrate her naturally coily hair and people love it when she changes it up. Here, Amanda Smith says she feels employers should base their hiring decisions on qualities and how they can perform at their task. Now, some people have had con controversial opinions, but Yolanda Barnhill hopes this message can help everyone understand each other.
It's always an interesting debate, no matter what side you stand on. You mentioned that you learned so much. What's the biggest takeaway you learned in doing your research? I guess probably that there are so many different ways to approach hair. Mm -hmm. um, it's chemicals, or if you're going to do the natural way, or even if you are just going to, I guess, wear weaves. I mean, there's so many different things people can do, and it goes all all kinds of races. All right, of course, you can keep that conversation going. You can log on to our Facebook page, WNCT9.